A couple of projects I've been planning require a number of segmented or repeated cuts, and while perusing the internet for various methods, I recognized a few common elements between them. I'm modifying a few of the ideas I found and adding in some modularity to accommodate a variety of projects all on one sled. The main inspirations were the Woodfather's box joint jig and the Kumiko crosscut sled by Johnny Trambucus Woodworks. I've linked their relevant videos in the description and those go into much greater detail on both the build and how the sleds are supposed to work. The first deviation from the Kumiko jig plan is how I attach the T-track to the metal pits. Instead of having the track sit atop the bottom plywood sheet, I routed a section for it to be epoxied in place. This reduced the material needing removal from the aluminum flat stock, and also dropped the rockler stop so their profile was beneath the upper plywood sheet and out of the way of any work piece. I also made the angled guides ride in their own T-tracks and the design for this section updated a few times in order to cover up some retroactive mistakes. I may add a third track in the future dividing the distances between the two I already put in place, but if I were able to do it again, I would have made the two tracks closer in the first place.
I've saved the box joint jig for last because some features I felt were missing from the original design were quite complicated. Adjustability and reusability were important to me, and my understanding of the original design seemed to force a new top jig for every pattern. You would have to get the cut locating pin the correct size and in the correct position the first try, and the face touching the work pieces would only help prevent blowout on the first pattern. To solve the former, the first step I took was to make the connection between the front half of the jig and the half clamping to the fence adjustable. So for that I used more of our favorite anodized aluminum track. This had the side benefit of allowing some play in how tightly the jig rode on the fence, but I still needed to pad extra space using some painter's tape. This seems like a good solution for now, but if it ever fails, I'll be able to replace it easily. To solve the reusability, I realized early on in the project I won't typically be using this sled for deep cuts, so it would be possible to leave most of the jig free from those cuts. If I were to cut a half lap into the jig facing the fence above the height of all these cuts, and the opposing half lap in a sacrificial piece, it could be clamped down by the weight of the setup. Additionally, I could still screw the pieces together for registration and remain clear of the cuts. This would allow me to use smaller sacrificial pieces that matched multiple patterns without having to remake the upper portion of the jig. This video is already running long, so my next one will have footage of me actually using the box joint jig. But for the Kumiko section, I need to plan a lot before I bust into that. Overall, this sled was a lot of fun to make. I had to get very creative in order to add features that I wanted, but I would have never thought to make something like this except after seeing the designs made by others. I think it looks pretty good too.